It's the next level. Oh god. Nolan. You monster. He's not dead. Even after evacuating the neighborhood, we had to keep the yield down. Best it'll do is knock him on his ass for an hour or two. Or maybe not even hurt him at all. He's gonna find Mark. I don't know who Nolan is anymore. I don't know what he's going to do. Me neither. So we better find Mark first. Hey panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Jamie. And this is going to be a spoiler full podcast about episode seven on the Amazon Prime's series Invincible. And we're covering Invincible season one, episode seven, We Need to Talk. And the synopsis for this particular episode is Feeling lost and confused, Mark looks for advice from Eve. At the same time, everyone is looking for him. And very short, very but yeah, everybody is looking for him. They very much are. Omni Man, Debbie, Cecil, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> oh, with this, we're going to move right into our initial thoughts. And Jamie, what are your thoughts? I thought it was a great episode. It, there was so much going on. It was so entertaining and a lot. Yeah. We got to find out exactly what Robot was up to, why Omni Man killed everybody, but that's okay. And there was so much blood and gore. And I love blood and gore. <laughs> I have to agree. Yeah, same here. I love it. It was a great episode. The gore did help because, well, I think this is, it's a trademark for the show itself, if you think about it, for an anime. And the fact that we do, you know, we find out that Omni-Man actually finally confesses to Debbie that, you know, everything. And Cecil knew that Nolan murdered, you know, the Guardians, the original Guardians. And now they have a plan. And throughout this episode, we see that plan put into effect of trying to eliminate not just Nolan, but Mark too, because they don't know where he sides. Right. And Debbie is in turmoil because this is her family. You know, she might not trust Nolan that much, but there's still love. And she loves Mark and, you know, doesn't want him hurt. And like you said, there's, there is so much going on within this episode, but we do get to see a lot of things that we uh, kind of predicted. <laughs> right. <laughs> and came up in thoughts. And we get some good comedic plots within it too. Yeah. And I got, that's why I enjoyed it. The, the, the point of comedy within it and along with the extreme violence, <laughs> it gets me every time. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> so with that, we'll move right into our top fives. Ah! Activate the collar. Ah! Ah! Immortal. You're going to destroy Robot and the new Guardians of the Globe for us. So you're number five? Number five is William. I have decided that he is the best character in the show <laughs> between yeah. the last two episodes. He always makes me laugh. You know, even just in the beginning, just his little like, woo, looking away when Amber and Mark were fighting, getting out of the car and everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's a really great friend to Mark. And blunt like the way he delivers the stories and everything he just cracks me up and the whole samurai analogy with the hamburger was hysterical oh yeah especially the way it slides <laughs> off and then he's just left with cheese and the I roll back and start chewing on it just the way it is like um yeah i like that he let mark go too like he let he didn't take it personally he's just like whatever he'll be back what i said was right he knows i'm right he is a good friend for that. He understood him more than anybody. He's known him all his life, I guess. So, yeah, he's he's a super good friend. And then, um, like the last scene with him, where he was able to like keep his cool with Omni Man, like yeah. I would be freaking out if any dad talked to me like that. Like you were supposed to bring him home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Don't kill me. But yet, let alone a superhero dad telling you that, like, <laughs> and him not really realizing it was he was a superhero. He goes, "How didn't I figure out that before?" <laughs> 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 He's got the same mustache, the gray on the sides. <laughs> it's a little obvious, but. But the fact that yeah, he slams his hand right on top of the car, and William's just sitting there. He's like, uh. 
they went <laughs> 200 miles west in, <laughs> in the forest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he goes. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I, I give him that. He, he was just like, he took, he was like, okay. Yeah. Well, I guess he saw a lot already with the cyborgs. So <laughs> still, I'm I'm impressed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, what my number five, it takes place just after that scene. And that's when Mark is in the house with Amber. And then he he does this whole dramatic thing where he wants to tell her that he's invincible and he does, and she goes, Yeah, I already knew that. Oh, thank God she already knew that. I feel so much better about her now. <laughs> she figured it out two or three weeks before, but she's so pissed off at him, not because of him not telling her, because in her opinion, and a lot of women's opinion, would be that you lied to me. You didn't tell me. But you have to factor in, they're still early on in their relationship. It's not like, and just to tell somebody you're a superhero, that puts a lot of people in jeopardy, too. And so it, it's that kind of naivete of like being a kid. And yeah. knowing what to do and how to do it, that kind of fits within this uh, little relationship that's going on. Yeah, and it's Mark's first relationship as far as we know. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't know how to deal with women. You yeah. know, we talked about that with the rice strainer and everything, and he didn't know what that was. <laughs> he didn't right. even know even how to approach a girl and let alone impress one. Because William was telling him to get rid of all his comics and he throws out everything, including the trash can that time. So, but yeah, that that was my number five. My number four is Robot's Love. Like he did, we were wondering what he was up to and what he was mm. up to was making himself a good match for Monster Girl, which is adorable. <laughs> <laughs> and he turned out, you know, we we're like, well, is he up to something nefarious? But no, once everything was done, he wanted to put the Mahler twins back into jail. He gave them bad schematics. <laughs> a little creepy that he used Rex's DNA, but yes, they <laughs> all point it. that out to him. I have this in my notes. It, it'll just go to him. Yeah, the fact that he uses Rex's DNA as a point makes him young too, like a little kid, just like around the same age as Monster Girl. It's I guess so that it would appeal to her exactly because so he's a thirty-year-old man in a teenage body, and she's like what a twenty-five-year-old woman. I think in a, she, yeah, I think she said she was twenty-six. 26 yeah in a teenage body too and she every time she uses her power she gets younger so he can't make himself younger at that point yeah what happens but, when she's like five years old i think they'll cross that bridge when they come to it <laughs> uh, i hope so or he comes out with uh, comes up with a solution to reverse that where she ages or at least doesn't change yeah i think he's working on that yeah yeah and, and they all thought it of being deceitful at a certain point. It's like, oh, why would you? Oh, that's just so creepy. And it is creepy. And then he didn't realize it until he thought about it. But, yeah. yeah. And then in the end, it seemed to work because they held hands at the very end, which was super cute. That was. She says, hopefully there's something going on. <laughs> I guess for the fact she got around the idea that it was not a metal machine. <laughs> right. Well, and I mean, come on, somebody who does all of that for you, because, you know, it started when he said that he was there at the mm -hmm. whole, at the hospital the whole time. Like you could see she was like, hmm, maybe so. <laughs> and now you have a human body. OK, yeah. it works. I mean, sometimes huge romantic gestures work. <laughs> they do. They go a long way. But she, he's got the face of Rex on her. So who knows how she feels about Rex? <laughs> well, she obviously thought he was cute once. Uh, at one point. Yeah. All right, well, my number four will, that will be Robot and the Mauler Twins. Uh, we, we get to see Robot's real self come out at, at a point where he needed to infuse his mind into the new body that uh, the Mauler Twins actually had created for him. And, yeah, we already topped on it saying, you know, Rex's DNA was used to create yeah. said body. And well, it had to be weird to watch yourself die. Because it's a copy of the brain. So he was yeah. in kind of both places at once. So watching yourself die has got to be really weird. We got that cool little visual with the arms. Like the yeah. weird baby looking arm with the real teenage hand and everything. I also love the fact that, you know, we got to figure out what happened, why they went to that gravesite at the very end of the mo uh, episode of last week. So, yes. you know, we found out it was immortal that they were digging up those kids they didn't want them to drink from the skull but as we could see 
it wasn't a skull. It was actually it's just his head. So how would they drink from that, honestly? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, I got some blood and guts. and Oh, it's all part of the throat. And we should have figured out because I think they said you drink from his skull, you'll be immortal. So we should have figured that out with the clue, but we didn't get to know those characters too well. So I'm giving us a pass. <laughs> exactly. And there's a lot of history we don't know about Immortal and how he became. We only saw when he was making his comeback or uh, coming back to life, the history of him up to a certain point. He had long hair. He, I guess you saw how he got his power through this energy yeah. burst. And then... You know, you see all other battles that he's done over the years, and it ends at uh, Nolan chopping off his head with his hand at that one last scene, and then yeah. he comes back to life. Yeah, that was really cool that we got to see some of his history. Yeah. Even for just a moment, that was really cool. Yeah, it's something that I always look forward to because there's certain mm -hmm. things that you always want to know. But yeah. with this, I guess over time we will find out they might have a retrospective. What's got you know how these beings came into play next season? Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe, or I'll, we'll just have to read the com go dive in the comic for. Oh, maybe that yeah that that's Robert's way of trying to tell us go read my comic. Yeah, we have it all there. You got the abridged version. You got the cliff notes. <laughs> that's what Wikipedia is <laughs> for, right? There's got to be yeah. a wiki on it. I'm sure there is. You number three. Number three, uh, Cecil's toys. He spent so much money basically just to slow Omni-Man down. Mm. Like you said, it was $4 billion, with a B dollars for the world's most expensive nosebleed. That crazy, was it <laughs> A-bomb laser? I'm not even sure exactly what that thing was. It looked like a nuclear bomb that was in the house, if you think the, about it. Well, in the house, but then also that laser from the satellite. Oh, yes. And that yeah. seemed like it was also a nuclear bomb type laser, which was weird. But, you know, they upgraded the Cybermen super fast because that was just, what, a few, a day ago? Hmm. You know. Well, they had Sinclair there, too, to help yeah, out. And but, you could tell Cecil hated him. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, it was, like, a day ago. Like, they just got back from the college and fighting. Like, it was the same. Like, it was the day before, and they've got, they've already got. An army. Uh, yeah. An army all set to go. Well, at least three of them. Uh, <laughs> but it was that day. So how are they going to have that many more? Exactly. Um, that that fancy gun that he that when he teleported out that he used to get Omni Man's attention, mm -hmm. the bomb that we already talked about, mm -hmm. Hail Mary, like the genetic work on her couldn't have been cheap, and storage of her couldn't have been cheap. She's got to yeah. eat a lot too. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what bunker they used. <laughs> right, like I'm sh and I'm sure I'm forgetting some other things. But yeah, for the fact that they went through all this just to get rid of him, so this is something that they've been building up for. They kind of left it on the wayside of determining what Nolan was doing or why he did it. So they got to the point where it was like, well, we just need to eliminate him. And they, I mean, ridiculous amounts of money. They, he has to spend more than most countries do in a year. Yeah. And it didn't work. None of it worked. Nope. None of it worked. <laughs> well, they were able to slow him down at a few key points where they needed to. But that was about it. And they were banking on the idea that Mark would be able to be the one to destroy him. I see with the Cyberman attack, I don't think Mark would be able to destroy Omni Man at this point in time. Well, he's only half human, too. So well, he's half human and half Viltramite. So. And he's just learning. Yeah. He doesn't know the full extent of his powers. He hasn't tested them, he hasn't been trained for too long. Nope. Like, I mean, the, Cyber, the Cyberman almost took him out, mm -hmm. and Omni Man dealt with them relatively handled i mean they got you know he took a beating but he didn't he ripped those guys apart <laughs> <laughs> literally yeah <laughs> all the blood and guts yep well, my number three that would be uh the fight with robot and the Mauler twins after he gets his new body and him using his uh neural link to control his robot so he was he came prepared he knew that the twins were going to do something and then we got that huge juggernaut of a robot that he uses towards the end that one was insane. Yeah, it was like a, a transformer at a at a certain point where it, yeah. boy, it comes out. It reminded me of that, and Hulkbuster it reminded me of too. Yeah, yeah, and the, and the fact that the Mauler twins couldn't handle it, but they almost had an upper hand with them with uh, Robot when you know because they have they share the same mind, so yep. they knew they were working together, and you know Robot was able to get away, and he did disappear. But there was that one moment you saw fear in his eyes when. The one twin shoots the gun 
and it's directly at him, and it, yeah. it the the huge gargantuan robot's arm gets blown off, and then he's able to leave. But of course, the twins are not that great at building certain things <laughs> with shoddy parts, so it only lasted one blast. <laughs> But yeah, that that was pretty cool. I enjoyed that, especially the banter between the twins and with Robot too. Yeah, I like I liked that grouping together. It was an interesting dynamic. Yeah, at least his voice and the his the way he was speaking was a bit different. Yeah. So it wasn't Zachary Quinto and the, and the clone, but anymore. Well, we probably they might bring him back out because if he's controlling other robots, he'd be able to speak through that robot for whatever they're doing. I hope so. I love Zachary Quinto. <laughs> yeah. And your number two? The father and son, Omni-Man, Nolan, Mark, Invincible dynamic. <laughs> I mean, Nolan seems to really want to tell Mark what's going on. Like we had that moment where, you know, we were supposed to think he was talking to Mark, but I think everybody, nobody was fooled. We all knew he wasn't actually talking to Mark at the beginning where he's mm -hmm. standing up on the mountain and like, one more sentence, we would have known what was going on. But of course, they didn't give us that. <laughs> yeah, he hesitated. Well, that was him rehearsing it. Right. Kind of like rehearsing a lie. But in this case, it was rehearsing a father to son talk, heart to heart. And he probably wasn't able to ever do something like that before, where it's like, well, this is, is what I did was really bad, but I have to explain it to him. And then yeah. he gets sidetracked <laughs> and, he and then won't. takes off. Yeah, I mean, he wants to tell Mark first above, you know, before his wife, who's pissed and has figured everything out and, you know, arguably deserves the answer first. But mm. he wants to tell his son first for whatever reason. And maybe that's part of what's going on. Is Well, who could really hurt Nolan at this point more than anybody? It would be his own son physically, yeah. you know, and who well, I guess he probably realizes that my son could take me. So I don't want him to turn against me, but I also don't want him. I want him to understand what was going on and why he did it. We don't know still. But... I know it's killing me. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. But it was cool to watch them also team up to fight Hail Mary. Yes. I, I love that Kaiju, but. Yeah. Mark even says it. It's like, oh, great, Dad. We finally get to do a, yeah. a team up. <laughs> it was really cute watching them together. Yeah. But you saw it in Nolan's face, like, who? Yeah. <laughs> Especially with the black, when, you know, the <laughs> Hail Mary's garbage getting on uh, Mark's face. It hit both <laughs> of them, but it happened to hit Mark's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I don't think they'd actually fight each other. I think they care about each other too much. Mm. But it really does make me nervous that Cecil thinks he can pit them against each other. Yes. And, Deb and Debbie was really concerned about that too she you know i guess you know that's where that line comes from now it's like now you know why i've always hated you yeah <laughs> that was your that number was my two? number two. Oh, well, mine would be well seeing immortal back you know his comeback that was great but it's so funny we we like i stated we get to see his history as he was coming back to life and we get that little flashback but when he does, he come, comes back and he's in a total rage. And I was thinking right away, Pet Cemetery, Pet Cemetery. <laughs> you know? I like the pounding that the Mahler twins had to do on his chest. That oh, yeah, by. because, yeah, and that, the whole reference towards Frankenstein. And he goes, oh. you got your, your information all wrong. That was a movie. The electric <laughs> it was different in the book. <laughs> All you're and, doing is beating him, and he just, like, had all these listings. It was pretty funny, though. And the staples on the neck. Yeah, but they go away, apparently. Yeah, but, I mean, that was very Frankenstein-y, too. Yeah, it was. Yeah. But I just found it crazy that they thought they could use him with the control collar, but he rips it off <laughs> right away. But yep. they already lost their control collars before when they were dealing with uh, Robot and uh, Mind Transfer to the clone. Yeah, well, and yeah, it, they it seems like it out. Robot gave them the wrong schematics anyway, so that yeah, thing wasn't going to work. Yeah, but I just love the fact that literally Immortal took off from where he left off when he died, where he wanted to kill Omni Man because yeah. of what he was doing, and we kind of get that fight back again, and very much similar. It was like you see Nolan's. Fist go right through. Oh, that Immortal. was amazing. That was crazy. 
And then he does it again with the hand and just chopping his yeah. head off again. So very similar. But the world can see it at this point. Yeah, that's going to make a big... being televised. So now the world sees Omni-Man as a killer of heroes. And now he... Not only does he have Cecil after him, but I'm sure the whole world would be after him. So I'm wondering if he's going to go into hiding. Oh, I didn't think of that. Yeah. Because, well, we got one more episode, so we'll probably get people trying to track him down or him trying to communicate with mark in some way and the story of what happened so otherwise i'm burning this place down yeah (laughs) you can't keep us wondering all eight episodes and not answer it yeah we'll throw our keyboards and our monitors around (laughs) like in those uh gifs that you see online (laughs) no 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 (laughs) but hopefully you know we do get to see that they they do give us information before we move into the next season Maybe it has something to do with an external force. He already said to Debbie, he wasn't controlled to do this. Nobody was controlling him to do this. So we know that aspect is real. But why he did it. So maybe there was something, an arrangement or something. Well, he did say it was his responsibility. And it's been his responsibility to take care of the planet. So I don't know. Yeah, Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. And we were kind of predicting what the idea of why he was doing this yeah yeah that that whole fight scene in the sky the immortal back i just love the idea i was like oh, okay we have another person that's huge that we we enjoyed from the very first episode but unfortunately got yeah dispatched so, too quickly <laughs> looks like we might be able to bring him back again if you can get all the parts and staple them together it looks like he'll be fine <laughs> do it all again and then he's raging out again <laughs> Well, you're number Number one. one? All right. The gore. Yay, gore. (laughs) There was so much blood and, like, cringy goodness in this episode. Yeah. When Cecil's goons were in the kitchen with Omni-Man and that guy was, like, ripped in half on the island and just, like, half his bloody body. It just slid right (laughs) on the counter. (laughs) And that was, like, right after... The scene with, like, William talking about the samurai and the... Yep, and the halves. Yep, it worked just so perfectly. Yeah, foreshadowing. <laughs> yeah, I love how they do that. And then the next scene, Omni-Man is about to pull Donald's spine out of his back, like, right mm. before the bomb went off. Like, that was like... Ah, ah. Yeah, poor um, Donald. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he seems like a little bit of a weasel anyway. Uh, the violent deaths of all the Cybermen was... Yeah. Awesome. And then we were just talking about Immortal's death. Like, everybody saw it. Again, it was like the hand through him. And then just this cloud of blood and guts and the two pieces of Immortal go flying off. Like, it was an awesome visual. Yeah. I mean, I agree. Yeah. And then there was Immortal doing the eye gouging, which I'm not a fan of eye stuff. So I could have lived without that. But it definitely yeah. made me cringe. <laughs> Don't go to the eyes. No, no, thank you. <laughs> nope, nope. I st- I'll, I'll watch you get ripped apart and ripped in half, and I'll cheer. But the eye stuff, nope, nope, nope. Can't watch it. Lose an appendage, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> the eyes, not the eyes. <laughs> and I'm sure if you guys uh, knew with Mortal Kombat coming out, they had a lot of that going on. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, watch that movie. <laughs> it's on my list to do before next week. Everybody I know has really liked it, so I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. So. Yeah, because there's a scene where you see limbs being taken off and replaced. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so that was your number one? That was my number one. Same here. I have to go with you with the, all the gore and the action within it. My eyes were glued to the to the set. I could not stop watching. I'm like, this is amazing. Yeah. Especially, like you stated, with, we already discussed it with the cyborgs getting all destroyed by Nolan. It was one after the other that they were throwing at him. With every scene, since Cecil just teleported to Nolan and shooting from then on, it was, okay, game on. And it was one task that Nolan had to deal with, one after the other, between Cecil, the cyborgs, and then we got the Hail Mary. But actually, I really think it started within the home. And Immortal, yeah. (laughs) Which they didn't expect. No. And of course, you know, the Muller twins... Didn't think things through as usual. <laughs> right. As good as they are as building, they're all kind of sloppy with what they do. Yeah, they're very blundery. 
Yeah. Yeah. But overall, yeah, I just enjoyed it. That was my main, it was like the action, the gore, and just more of that. That's yeah. what got me. That was why I thought it was really good. It was a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. So we got quite a few notes. Yeah. Cause there's, there's, notice. there's a lot packed into this episode. Yeah. We got a lot of uh, interesting information. You want to start us off? All right. Um, simple, easy. Officially, we know Black Samson got his powers back. Yay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. They, they kind of keyed that in. You know, I think Monster Girl actually stated, she goes, great. I get stuck in a hospital, get hurt all this time. You go in a hospital, you get your powers back. <laughs> <laughs> And then on that same note, um, beer in a milk carton sounds gross. Yes. But putting the missing girl face on the side, like back in the 80s, was really funny. That was funny. <laughs> uh, to add to that beer in a milk carton, think about like Superbad when he put the beer or the liquor in the. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was, it was some sort of fluid from a car. But he <laughs> dumped it all out. Radiator fluid. That's what it was. Yeah. He dumped it all out and it was green. So they had green beer or something in it. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, but in this case, yeah, they all said that. And I just laughed how they, they talked to Rex saying, yeah, he did that. He drained all the milk <laughs> to put it in there. What a waste of milk at that point. Right. Yeah. Eve, we didn't even touch on her. And she was in this episode. Like, she's still our little beacon of goodness and hope. And I love how happy she is with her life right now. Mm. And, you know, when she made the comment about, like, this is better than my parents, but she also said she should call her mom, which means she's not, like, super pissed at her parents, or at least not her mom. And still, no, wants she had to... time to think of what yeah. she was doing. And, you know, she realized it's like, okay, at least it was her mom. She didn't say her yeah. dad. <laughs> and when she woke up in the morning, she's able to, like, do all this stuff before getting out of bed. How yeah. fantastic is that? I could use that power. <laughs> Especially how she cleaned herself off, too, yeah. with a, within a moment. I would love that. That was amazing. Made her own coffee. Yeah. <laughs> so this this just cracked me up. The view when Nolan is looking for Mark and he walks into Mark's room and our forced perspective is of the corner where his tissues and lotion are just to remind you that he is, in fact, a teenage boy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that, too. I thought it was funny. I mean, they made, it was like they forced you to see it. You <laughs> yeah, they, they purposely put that in there. Yeah. yeah. And then my last point was just the Debbie and Nolan argument. Like, it's really, really hard to come back from not trusting your partner. It, yeah. It's really hard. Like, it makes you reevaluate everything that was ever done in your relationship and just not trust anything that was said previously. Yeah. It's going to be, if they can get back together, it's going to take a lot of work. Oh, definitely. Especially since there's death involved. <laughs> he right? killed people. You know, how do you trust, uh, how do I trust you not to do that to me? Right? Hmm. Yeah, I agree with that completely. Well, one for me would be Donald stating it's been an honor and no one goes, for what? <laughs> and then blowing up, and then they blow up the whole house. But we realize he was saying that to Cecil and Cecil responds to that. But the fact that it's like, wow, Donald just gave his life for the, for the team. But. Silly me. When I saw him going for the button, I thought that was just to like hit an intercom to say it's been an honor. I didn't see the bomb coming. <laughs> I had a funny feeling. I was like, oh, he's going to blow up. <laughs> <laughs> the other one I had was Omni Man has been exposed to the world that he's a murderer. I'm just wondering how this plays out next episode. I'm wondering if uh, people will get involved, like the, just the regular citizens that are out there. Yeah. Are they going to start tracking him, try to find out? Or are they going to look at him and go, oh, hold on. We know who he is. His name is Nolan. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I just realized who he is. He's a real estate agent. No, I, don't, <laughs> I forgot what he does for a living. Does he do anything? Or is he just exactly. a superhero? I think he's That's... just a superhero. And then his wife does everything else. Yeah, she does She does the real estate. Well, that's why she said, get out of my house. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Well, Robot showing up and showing his new body to the team. Yeah, I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> so creepy, though. Yeah. <laughs> that was the only thing I had. All right. Uh, quotes? Sure. All right. When Rex said, I'm pretty sure that's what happened to the last, last hope, and it <laughs> sprayed the blood, I'm like, yep, that's exactly what happened to the last, last hope. <laughs> like, he basically figured it out. He goes, yeah. wait a minute, Omni-Man? We have to go. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> 
<laughs> now they realize they're like, holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> they're pooping their pants. The Mahler twins, one advantage of being a clone is we always know what the other is doing. Mm. William, my favorite. It figures I finally fall for someone and boom, cyborg. <laughs> <laughs> And then, the way the way he explains it with the hand coming yeah. out, boom. <laughs> boom. Like, obviously, of course, that's what's going to happen. Cyborg. Yeah. And then um, lastly, it was Omni-Man, the two things to Mark, which there's so much you don't know, Mark. And then, a few, you know, a little bit later, and the ending thing was, we need to talk. Yeah. Because, yeah, they need to talk. And I need <laughs> to listen. I need to know what happened. <laughs> we need to, yeah, exactly. We want to know. I need to know. It's like the Inquirer. The Inquiring Minds want to know. Yes. <laughs> I've waited long enough. I need to know. Well, we got one more episode, so we'll right? find out. <laughs> very right? much like with the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, where we got all the answers at the very end. But they kind of sidestepped a few things. <laughs> they always do. Like there's gonna yeah. be some. There's gonna be some things they set up in the earlier episodes that we're not gonna get. You know. Yeah. Like that Mars alien coming to Earth. Yeah. That's for, that's for season two, assuming they get a season two. Hopefully, I'm pretty sure they can easily come on with everything that's going on, even if the studios are limited to what they could film. This is you anime. Can, yeah. And they could they could all record their voices from home. Well, first one for me that would be William saying. Your dad's Omni Man. How did I not see that before? <laughs> <laughs> Next one would be Robot saying the cryptographic key is the entire text of Frankenstein. And the Mauler twin goes, Look who has a sense of humor. And that's after Robot tosses him the USB drive with the schematics to the new control collar to the Mauler twin. I thought that was brilliant. That was really good. Yeah. Next one, Robot. All this conflict and destruction is pure theater. And that was during the battle with the, the Mauler Twins, which it was. Yeah. And the Mauler Twins saying, Robot gave us bad schematics. And the other one <laughs> says, I know that. <laughs> they just figured it out. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I think they're the biggest comic relief more than anything. They're, just the yeah. argument. Yeah, they're fun to watch. Especially with the banter between them, but you know they had that little little bit of seriousness to them. When oh, here comes the bad part, and that's when what is his name, Rudolph, comes to life, his real self. Yeah, and they look at each other, and you know, they know because they usually wipe out that information from the clone or from the real person, so that they don't know which one is the clone. Right, because otherwise you go nuts, which is apparently. And, but and the number of times I think they've rebuilt themselves, they're both clones at this point. Like, at this point, yeah. yeah. There's no yeah. original left. There's not nothing of the original that's left. Maybe that's why everything is so watered down and they can't get everything 100% when it comes to making things. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. Yeah. I really thought that as robots, you know, brain or essence was being transferred, mm -hmm. I really thought it was going to stop at like 95% and yeah. do some weird thing. Like, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think he, they were going to make it to 100. Yeah, I love how the Mueller twins get like a little bit pissed because he goes, oh my god, it's a mutation. It can't handle that many neurons or that size of neuron. And then that's when the fire ensues and then he has to twist the wires to make everything work to bypass. But by doing that, kills his shock or his control collar. I was going to say shock collar. <laughs> <laughs> they should have had shock collar. <laughs> Would have helped. <laughs> Would have helped, maybe. All right, so we uh, we got some feedback, I see. Yeah, we got a novel by Chris. <laughs> <laughs> this episode was fantastic and bloody. See, everybody loves the gore. Yep. Finally, stuff came to a head with Nolan, and we get to see the penultimate super go dark, and there is no kryptonite to be found. Some of the ways he took the grunts out were just perfect. Just the push onto the island in the kitchen and the person broke in half. I felt that a bit in my midsection. Yeah. We all loved that scene. I loved when they shot him from space and Nolan was just like, you wouldn't dare. I felt bad for the immortal. He comes back just to die again in another gruesome fashion. We all figured the Cybermen, as Jamie has coined them, were going to be back. Just didn't figure it would be this next episode, but it was fun to see them go ape and beat Nolan down for a little bit. Though, if Cecil was smart about using them, he would have sent a small army of them instead of just three that would warn Nolan down the line at the very least. I think he just didn't have time to make any more personally. Cause I think they were just working with what they had because think about it. They didn't like the idea of what Sinclair was doing. So those are the only ones that they were able to salvage. 
Yeah. And I don't think Cecil was ready to do that to regular civilians and make them into yeah, cyborgs. Dead, like they used dead soldiers, which I thought was a nice. Yeah. A, a way to sidestep the morality issue that the that he had with the quote unquote Cybermen. Yeah. William was amazing, just keeping it real with Mark, especially with the burger reference. He had a lot of good lines in the small amount of time he was in the episode as well. And we got to see the conclusion of Robot's cloning process with the twins. Love the giant garbage truck transformer. Totally took the twins by surprise. Loved when he showed up at the Guardian's HQ in his normal form and everyone was like, who the hell are you? It will be interesting to see how that storyline continues and how fast they accept Robot's new form and see how the new dynamic pans out. I can't wait for next week to see how the whole dynamic between Nolan and Mark changes from Mark seeing what happened at the end of the episode and maybe get why Nolan killed the Guardians. Cool. Thanks, Chris, for sending that in. Amazing. I love the insights that everybody has. I know. (laughs) With that, we got some uh, voicemail from Steve Brown. Yay, Steve. You're ruining my childhood, and that's hard because it already sucked. Hey, Mark and Jamie, this is Steve, and I'm watching Invincible for the first time, and that line just jumped out at me. I'm not sure if I'm going to watch this one a second time like I did last week, because there was a whole lot in this one, so I probably should watch it again. But man, it was really good, and those fights were great, and seeing that kaiju come back, um, the, the, what do they call it, the Hail Mary, and then everybody, basically, it seems like everybody on the planet now has figured out, right, that Omni-Man killed the Guardians, the first Guardians of the Globe. You know, with the immortal man emerging, coming back to life. And, you know, I wonder if uh, if we're going to see that again, if that's going to be a running gag through however many seasons this show goes. Somebody stitches him back together and he just comes back to life again. Because um, we saw that with the Mahler twins when they stitched his neck together. It, it rehealed sort of thing. Um, but uh, and, and Rex <laughs> looking at the blood stain and going, uh, oh, I think that's what happened to the last uh last best chance they had against Omni-Man or something like that. Um, so, And just the interplay between Rex and, and Rudy was really, really good and funny. And why do you have my face? Why, why did you steal my kid face? So, yeah, just hilarious. Uh, can't wait to hear you guys talk about this one and break it down. All right, later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you take my face? <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah, we all felt the same way too, Steve. <laughs> definitely did. Thanks for the feedback, and th- I thank everybody who sends in feedback. So if you guys feel the need, just like Steve and, and Chris did, send in some feedback. We'll we'll play it and we'll read it. So continue yeah. to send it in, even if it's for older episodes or yeah, we can chat on the Facebook page too. Yeah, exactly. We have a comment thread for the episode itself, so you could just send that in there. So with that, that's basically our coverage. So we're just gonna move right into podcast recommendations. Uh, mine for this week is Nightlight Hard- Horror Podcast. Mm-hmm. It is entirely done with black writers and black performers. Ooh. Yeah. They hit the vampires pretty hard. So if you like <laughs> vampires, that's a good way to get into it. I'll go it. with the werewolves. <laughs> Funny enough, this week's one was about werewolves. This week's ah. podcast, or it was about werewolves. Oh, cool. Yeah. Awesome. I got to check that out. Well. First one I have, well, I've mentioned it before on this podcast, but it was pretty cool. The Thing With Two Heads podcast and YouTube with Sean and Chris. And this past Friday, I sat in on a horror trivia that they were doing. You know, they had giveaways at the end too, some autographed materials, some rarities. And I had commented to them that I love what they're doing. I love Chris's work in film as an effects artist. And I miss Sean's face every time I go to a convention because Sean usually is a manager for a lot of celebrities that are out there. He has his own company. And I've seen Sean over the past 20 some years at rare conventions. I've let him cut in on me online for certain people if need be. (laughs) I, I, I guess he just knows my face and knows me on occasion and then we're able to talk but i i just miss that aspect but i highly recommend them because they were able to give us a shout out on that live stream for that trivia so if you guys were on there that would be great if you continue to listen to us and uh i'll just keep plugging for them because they're good people and the next one I have would be from garf g-a-r-f and that would be the george romero george a romero foundation and they have a facebook live account for all things george a romero 
Now, they, I'm not sure if they do an actual podcast or YouTube. I just see them through Facebook. But this week, they will have their fourth live broadcast with Patty Tolman from Knight Riders 1981 for the 40th anniversary of that movie, which I love. Wow. So this past week, uh, this past Friday, what I sat in on, or Saturday, actually, no, a Saturday, they had Ed Harris and Robert Rubenstein. And oh, Donald Rubenstein, sorry, got to get the name right. <laughs> but they uh, and Donald played a, a, a minstrel within the movie, but he also composed the music within the movie itself. So the ending song that you see at the funeral scene, he wrote literally on site during filming. It was a great thing to watch. Uh, we got to hear a lot of stories from Donald and from Ed. Patty, who I've had on this particular podcast for an interview. She's going to be there for this one this coming Wednesday. Hopefully this will be out by that time. That way you guys could check it out. If not, I'll just leave links. I've already posted something with it and as an upcoming an event within our Facebook thread. So that way, hopefully you guys have been checking it out. And hopefully with my other podcast, we'll cover Night Riders. I've been talking about it. I just never found anybody to really cover with it <laughs> on that particular movie with on. So... Check that out and check out Garf. They actually have an actual website as well. I'll leave links in the description of that in our Facebook page too. So that way it's it's a lot easier to go there to find that information. But eh, a lot of people have a hard time looking at all that information under podcast notes and then try to link it because they're using yeah. their phones. So that was pretty much it for me. So, well, to submit your feedback, you could actually just... Go to our Facebook page, like I mentioned, and that would be facebook.com slash panels to pixels. Or you could just send us an email, and it will be panels to pixels one at gmail.com, panels two spelt out to you, and the number one at gmail.com. You could just send an email, like Chris did, but Chris, it was an email. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah, he, he sent an email, and with Steve, he emailed the same thing, but recorded his voice and sent it as an attachment. So that's how we're able to play it. You could do the same. Or you just go to our Facebook page and look for the image of what we're covering that week and leave a comment because we'll just tell you when we're recording or around the time that we're recording. So that way you can get it in on time. And even so if you options. don't, yeah, even if you don't, we'll, we'll still put it in the following week for the next episode. So with that, you could find us on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice you're using. And obviously, you're listening to us, so just tell a friend. Word of mouth is always great. And if there is a rating or review, we'd really appreciate that if you could do that for us. And you could also find us on YouTube. So all you have to do is search Panels to Pixels Podcast. And if you're there, please give a thumbs up if you like it, and that's how you've been listening to it. And subscribe so it notifies you when the next episode is up. And don't get confused with us and the other panels to Pixels because they're great <laughs> guys. They're in England. They talk everything comics and comics turn into video games and the nostalgia of adaptations and things of that nature. Check them out. They're really good guys. So where else can listeners hear us? Well, I can be heard right here on Panels to Pixels, as always, on the Next Level Network. So you could also hear me, like I've already mentioned, on my other podcast, Adrenaline Cinema Podcast on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. And there I cover action movies, adventure films, suspense, and thriller movies. So like I said, I'm looking to do Night Riders. I'm finishing up editing Face Off, and that will be available probably as soon as you hear this. You might hear that. <laughs> And after that, I will be doing Nobody with Rima from Strange Indeed. Ooh, that'll be good. And following that, I'm not sure exactly. I'll have to go through my list of people that I have to go through. So <laughs> I will notify you when we are covering another film. And you can just send in your feedback there, too. Just like here, I put a Facebook post. I put the wallpaper of the movie that is playing currently. And I leave an image of what we're covering next and ask you to leave feedback down below if you wanted to leave feedback to that as well not just through the facebook page for adrenaline cinema podcast you could always just go to our email address and email us at adrenaline cinema podcast at gmail.com see i made that one easier because it was <laughs> the second time i actually did a podcast email 
<laughs> I'm sorry if people get confused with the uh, email for panels to pixels. But that was done over three years ago. <laughs> so, well, obviously, Jamie, you can be heard right here. Right here. That's it. And you'll be here next week when we'll be covering the last episode of Invincible. Yep. I've got some some possibilities of some other podcast to guest on, but right cool. now it's just here. Awesome. And you're great. And it was fun having you. Fun. I'm sure you could be coming back on again eventually for something else we'll do. Absolutely. So with that, that's pretty much our show. And I just want to thank everybody for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Jamie. And this was Panels to Pixels, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good day, sir. <laughs>